بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام م ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم يوم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك يا ربنا على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. Dear respect brothers and sisters, after praising Allah subhanahu wa taala for His great bounties on each one of us, the bounty of Islam, the bounty of Iman, the bounty of Quran, and after asking Allah subhanahu wa taala to accept our salam, our love to the great Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May the blessing and the peace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him, upon his family, upon his wives, upon his companions, and upon his followers. We are going to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with piety, with fearing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us amongst those who are going to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to see from Muslims. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who are deserving to be belonging to the best ummah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to all the human beings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unify the ummah and return the ummah back to the dignity and the glory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the first century of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of our deeds sincere to his cause. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our intention. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our righteous deed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our repentance. Inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are still with the sessions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did favor. With the sessions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored. The sessions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has surrounded with angels. Send the tranquility upon them, overshadow them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the names of those who are attending such sessions in his domain, in his dominion, in his malakut. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Back again to some of the rules, some of the themes that we need to establish or to fix the puzzles of each one of them, which are the basis that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Opinions are here and there. Everyone is saying, everyone is giving fatwa. Everyone is making his own. Talks are a lot. And some of them are related to halal and haram, and some of them are 100% contradicting to one another. Oh, Islam, how we can get Islam back? How we can get the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that whole majority of secularism, communism, as we agreed earlier. If it will be a vote amongst human beings nowadays worldwide, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not get 100%. Isn't it correct? If there is a vote, Amongst the human being, upon on, or the vote will be to uh, to confirm that there is la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will not get hundred percent. And that is the way that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made it. That there is Jannah and there is not. Only amongst the community of angels it will be hundred percent. But human being, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made it clear. Some will make it to Jannah and some will make it to Hellfire. Some will be called believers and some will, will, not, will be called Kafir, non-Muslims. And some will stay in the middle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows what's going to be their, their situation between the, the end of Jannah 
between the destination of Jannah, the paradise, and the destination of the hellfire, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the chapter of Al-A'raf. So talks are many, as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did say, qila wa qal, means you will say, I'll say, he will say, he will say, oh sister, what's halal? That's halal, that's haram, that's my own. I just, I, I, I feel comfort with, I think. And unfortunately, Muslims, I'm not, not going to talk about non-Muslims. I'm not going to talk about kafir. They are so dare to say without knowledge. It's so easy for us. Oh, brother, what's halal? What's haram? Who did him? Oh, this halal. It's haram. And to the extent that we are going to distribute judges, sisters are talking to one another and they are given 10 fatwas per second. Brothers are doing the same. Families are doing the same. And if you will ask, do you have the evidence? I just like, I think. Think what? But you are contradicting one another. One of you is correct and one of you is not. Or maybe both of you are not correct. Something, what is the evidence? Who can make it right based on which rule? What is the base? And again to the same base. The discussions are, oh, do just like, is it true that Islam, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come back? The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the predominant with, with whatever we can see in, in, in the world nowadays? Yes. Yes. And back to the same concept that will never change. One of the themes that we have to have it again, whatever we are calling in the DNA means you cannot live without. If you want to be called one day, under all who believe. Ya ayyuhal ladheena aman. And it will never change. As Umar radiallahu anhu did say. Which is something that, just like, we can feel how harsh is, is the life. That, that, that's my personal. It might be yours as well. And I, I hope that we can, we can have the same. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. I have, I have never felt the real comfort out of those sessions, regardless who you are. You can have that session with your family. You will feel the same comfort. You can have the same session with your friends, brothers, sisters, family members, and you will feel the same comfort. Other than those sessions, it's just like, Whatever you have to go through, because those are the typical aspects of dunya that you need to deal with. We cannot isolate ourselves out of the communities. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi some of the companions did the same. And some could not bear it. They, could not, they cannot make it. Some of their mentalities is to deal and be patient on what they are going to face and encounter. And some, they said no. I couldn't, I couldn't live in, in, in such environment. And that was the time of the companions. What we are calling the best century. Abu Dhar was not able to live with them. Abu Dhar was not able to live with Ibn Abbas, Uthman, Muawiyah, and Umar. Abu, what, those are the top in, in all characters. However, for Abu Dhar, he used to think that uh, with, with Omar's way of life, what we know about him. For Abu Dhar, that's a fancy way of life. And he used to tell them, guys, I cannot just... I have realized the, 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 the fact, the nature of this dunya to the extent it has become for me almost... I don't need it! I need nothing out of <laughs> Even the curtain, I don't need it. Why well, have to spend my night and I have a buck in my, in my pocket? A buck! Not thousands, not millions. I don't need it. Abu Dhar for tomorrow. I, I, why I have to think about tomorrow? I need to fix my today. Then I'll worry about my tomorrow. Tomorrow Allah will make it. That's the way of Abu Dhar. And it came to a point that he told each one of them, guys, I, just, I love you so much. I love our teacher Muhammad. We love one another. But even you are the best century, I cannot stay with you. You are right. He have realized, he, he, he kept criticizing till Ibn Abbas told him, Abu Dhar, 
take it easy. Whatever you, you, can, you can enforce some criteria of harsh on yourself. Because that's the way you want to you wanna teach yourself. That's the way you want to breed yourself. That's the way you want to fix your nafs. Fine. But that's a standard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make it as an obligation on all. You want to pray half of the night. That's yours. Whomever is going to pray to rak'ahs, you are going to tell him that you are in the hellfire. His capability is two rak'ahs. He's fasting Ramadan and other 10, 15 days during the whole year. If he's not going to make the fasting of the wood, alayhi salam, you are going to tell him that you are in the hellfire? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Abu Bakr has given all of his money to the sake of Allah. Whomever is going to give half of his money to the sake of Allah, you are telling him that you have crossed the margin, you have, you have committed shortcoming, and you are in the hellfire? It doesn't work. That's Abu Bakr criteria, his standard. And he never commanded any to be like him. He knows what's called obligation, what's called first level, second level. Abu Bakr was ambitious to the extent he wanna, he's not even satisfied with level number thousand in Jannah. He wanna get the Firdaus al-A'la with Muhammad, simple. That's his target. But still, there are people who will be in, in grade number one in Jannah. And they are still called, they are in Jannah. So whatever you are, you want to enforce on yourself cannot be enforced on all. And it came to a point that the time of Uthman, mashallah, Futuhat openings was everywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the wealth to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uthman was already rich, donating from day one, preparing the whole army of al husra buying the well and donated to the sake of Allah as a gift to Muslims, selling the whole, buying the whole 10 caravans that came to Medina. And everyone was competing to acquire that caravan. And everyone wanna pay to each one of the traders or commercial guys $2 to one. And it has reached it to seven to one, eight to one. And Uthman make, made it clear to them, Uthman, your caravans, your tijara, your business, we are going to offer you. You spent one dollar with all of your expenses, including direct and indirect cost, overhead, everything will pay you two to one. He said, no, no, it doesn't work with me. Four to one, it doesn't work with me. And they reach it seven and eight to one. Seven and eight to one. And they told them, it doesn't work, guys. I have received the offer as 10 to 1. And just, who's that crazy, just like trader who can, who can offer 10 to 1? Who, how he's going to make money out of? And he told them, Allah has given me the offer. Al-hasanatu bi-ashri amthaliha. Hasana is multiplied by 10. I'm going to open one door, Allah's going to open for me 10. And he said, the whole caravan, O oh Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the whole caravan is donated to the sake of Allah. When the Prophet was in need to prepare the a whole army, a whole army, a whole army for Tabuk, Uthman said, Ya Rasulullah, I'll take care of it. It's not two, three guys giving them camels and horses. He said, I'm going to take care of the whole army. I'm going to take care of it. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam has smiled at Uthman's face, and he made it clear. Are you a mass? All the, all, the, all the great generation, all the generation of the companions. Nothing will harm Uthman after today. He's still alive, whatever he will do. He made it. Nothing will harm Uthman after today. Abu Dhar, during that time, he was telling Uthman, you are spending, you are paying your zakah, you are donating, Muawiyah, you are in sham, donating, taking care of Allah's obligation. But why you are saving? Why you live in a, in a, in a luxury way of life? And Muslims can do that. There is no problem with that. And he came back with the, one of the verses in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a different interpretation. 
that those who are saving money, dhahab and fiddah, gold and silver, the, it will be used to iron them in the day of judgment in, in the hellfire. And Uthman told him, Abu Dhar, that's, the verse cannot be as such. And he came back, all of them, to the great translator of the Quran, Ibn Abbas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with both of them. And Ibn Abbas told Abu, Abu Dhar, you are the great man. We know who you are. Because all of them have, during the life of their teacher, each one of them has received one of the cards. One of the cards that will never be given to any but him. Each one of them has something known, narrated, heard, witnessed by all companions. And it's coming out of the tongue of the man who will never lie. That his word is a revelation. Each one of them has something. Usman has something. Ali has something. Aisha has something. Whatever will happen between them. It's their own effort to please Allah. Some of them might make the effort. And they are correct. And they will be rewarded twice. And some of them might make the effort. And they made it wrong. And they will be? Huh? Huh? Penalized or what? Huh? Rewarded once. Not penalized. They made the effort to the sake of Allah. As Muhammad sallallahu The intention, those who are talking about Aisha radiallahu anha, Ali radiallahu anha, Muawiyah radiallahu anha, those ignorance and, and idiots who know nothing about the great generation. Each one of them is, they are still human being. They will do their best to please Allah. Some might make it right and they are rewarded twice. And some might make it wrong without intending to make it wrong. And they will be rewarded once. They are not, they are not even called penalized. They are still getting rewards for the effort, for the righteous intention, for the sincerity. Even with the mistake or the unintentional mistake in the final result. Because that's not the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making. And Ibn Abbas told Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar, La kanza fi malin kharajat fihi zaka. What's called the kanz to keep saving and be greedy and stingy, that's not applied in money that you are giving the zaka in. You are paying your zaka, your obligation, live in a palace, live in a villa, live in a luxury way of life as far as your heart is thanking Allah day and night. What's wrong? Allah wanna see his, the effect, as Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam would say, Allah wanna see the effect of his bounties on his servant. You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with a nice job, good income. Show your, show your family as, as such. What's wrong with that? As far as that the obligation or more is being given on due, on time, to the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he told him the verse is applied on those who are not making it. Those who are not paying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. Those who are stingy and greedy. And that's the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the verse to penalize them. It's not applied on those. That's Uthman. That's Muawiyah. Allah has made it open for the Ummah. Ghana'im, spawning and earnings are coming from everywhere. It has become the, the East and West. Umar radiallahu anhu did pass away, has been killed. And he has in his hand two-thirds of the whole earth. 30, 35 years of, of revelation, that's it. He passed away and he has in his hand almost two-thirds of the whole earth. And still many of his leaders are, are, is, is at the gate of one of the, uh, the, other, the other new places to be opened. And it has continued in the time of Uthman. And it has continued in the time of Ali. And it has continued in the time of Muawiyah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of them. And Abu Dharr has realized that his criteria can be only his own. It's a, it's a different standard, but he cannot deal with it. Whenever he's going to see somebody has a, a jaguar, it can be from halal. He's going to tell him that's haram, which is not. 
And when Ibn Abbas told him, he has realized that his way can be only applied on him. And that is the reason he said, now I'm going to take my guys, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, we love you to the sake of Allah. We are the great generation of the companions of Muhammad. But this way of life, sometimes you are in a community, you say, they are great. I cannot meet with the requirement. I cannot fit in them. Is it correct? That's, that's not me. I cannot find myself in them. But they are good. They are not doing something wrong. But that's not my way. And that's what Abu Dhar made it clear. Guys, Jazakumullah kulli khair. I can handle just like a few sheep, few goats, and I'm going to take care of them in the desert. And it is what it is. Done. He has left the whole city. And he has taken his wife. Now we can understand that your partner could be of the same of the same ground or not. You might come up with, with another partner who might not commit haram. But the two standards are different. But Abu Dhar's partner can accept the same. Somebody will say, oh, my wife, now I'm not going to live in Medina anymore. Those guys, uh, their standards are different than me. And I could not stay with them. Those are the companions. You're not talking about criminals. Companions. But he's telling his wife, now you are going to come with me. We are going to stay in the desert. She didn't tell him, are you crazy? Go. I'm going to stay here. I have to stay here. Just otherwise you have to divorce me. You know? It never happened. Because they were two partners agreed on the same standard. Is it correct? Many times you might come along with a partner you might have the same standard or not. She might have a higher standard than you. And you might have a higher standard than her. And both standards are good. And somehow it should be worked out. And Abu Dhar did leave. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just has made him passing away in the desert and no one around him. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent on the day of his death. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and a group of the companions just passing by to attend his death next to his wife. He has been buried and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud did pray the janazah on him. And he said, Wallahi al-Azim, I can see nothing but what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us years and years back on the day of Tabuk when Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam has left and each one of the companions is preparing his stuff and joining the army. Till one day, he was expecting somebody and he has seen one man coming alone. And he said, Abu Dhar. This guy will be Abu Dhar. He hasn't seen him. But his wish to have Abu Dhar. And he was Abu Dhar. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud would say, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam would tell us on that day, Abu Dhar, يعيش وحده ويموت وحده ويبعث يوم القيامة أمة واحدة. he will live alone, die alone, and come in the day of judgment as one nation, not one person, nation. he has met his standards, and he did fulfill it. and he will come for what he has done. not everyone can isolate himself. Oh, that's community, I couldn't, just like, as Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam did say, it will be a time that sometimes you'll say, what did the hell I've been doing? Company what? Firm what? Consultant what? Get out, get out of the whole hill. I couldn't continue anymore. And the Prophet said, it might be a time for the believers. While mixing up with, with communities, hearts are getting harder. And it's rusting more and more. To the extent, that the servant of Allah might say, I wish, because I'm not sure what's gonna happen to me once I'm out. How I'm gonna face the fitna. What's gonna be my consequence? I don't know. Are we trusting what's gonna happen? No. Are we confident of what we might face after leaving the, the gathering and, and be out? No. Is it good or is it bad? We are gonna go to our big Muslims waking up. Allah knows going to, to the bed, the kafir, and he will wake up differently. Allah knows. And the Prophet said it might be a time to avoid because of the high risk of interaction and mixing and mingling to take some sheep, some goats to a part of the mountain and take care of them 
till the angel of death will come and pick up the soul. سيأتي زمان على أمتي يكون أحب رزق أحب رزق أحدكم إليه. The best sustenance or business for any one of you to take care of few sheep to take care of them in a part of the mountain alone. No fitna, no intermingling, no intermixing, no interacting, no nothing till Allah will pick up his soul. Umar radiallahu anhu did make it clear. The same concept that each one of them has made it and based on his way, they made it to the take of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and each one of them was successful. And that is the reason the Prophet ﷺ is saying about all of them. Their mentalities were different. Their attitudes were different. Their characters were different. Their, their weaknesses and strengths were different. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, Arhamu ummati bu ummati. The most merciful one of my companions with my ummah is Abu Bakr. Does it mean that Umar was not merciful? Does it mean that Umar is not merciful? أعلم أمتي the most knowledgeable amongst my companions of halal and haram is Muadh ibn Jabal. Does it mean that Abu Bakr and Umar are not aware of halal and haram? What does it mean? It's strength. You are good in math. You are excellent in math. You, we, we have to be good in everything in, this, in that whole list. But one of us is, is excellent in math. One is excellent. Higher, higher capabilities in science, higher capabilities in algebra, and so on and so forth. The, the strongest in the deen of Allah is Umar. Does it mean that Abu Bakr was not strong in the deen of Allah? No. Aminu Hadi al-Ummah, the honest of this Ummah is Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah. Does it mean that the rest are not honest? Hawari Hadi al-Ummah is Zubair ibn al-Awam, the disciple of this Ummah is Zubair. Does it mean, what about the, the others? What about the others? The one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels are feeling shy from, is Uthman ibn Affan. What about others? But each one of them has, a, has an excellence in one subject. But all of them have achieved what Allah needs in all subjects. And they have agreed on the same, as Umar radiallahu anhu did make it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm, I'm trying to, to address the theme because it's a whole mess. Nowadays, you are gonna hear and read whatever will make the heart bleeding. And you don't know exactly what's going on. And it's being quoted or refer to some of the Muslim thinkers, or whatever will be called. But because of the talks that will be here and there, fatwas that will be here and there, everyone is saying, everyone is giving fatwa, everyone is making it halal, everyone is making it haram, and, and Muslims are coming to a point, what we can do? We need to please Allah. How we are gonna make it in the, in the middle of that whole mess, as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did describe, during his time. He left it already behind. He had made it clear. And Umar radiallahu anhu, from what he has learned from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to understand that, let them say whatever they want to say. Again and again and again, I'm trying to confirm the same meaning. Regardless, don't tell me majority. Don't tell me many are saying. Don't tell me we are only few. Yeah, I need you to be a, a part of the few. Because that's what we have agreed upon earlier. Once you will be a part of the few, you will make it. وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Few will be thankful. I hope that one day you will be called stranger. We need to be stranger. That's what we need. Simple. I don't want to be called, oh, he's a, he's a part of the ministry. Where is that ministry? Oh, on the beach. Okay, that's the ministry. I don't wanna I don't, I don't wanna be a part of that ministry. If I'm a, if I'm gonna be called stranger because I'm avoiding the, the, the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm proud of being a stranger. And I need to be a stranger. Why? For what Umar radiallahu anhu has said. We were humiliated. Before Islam, Arabs were where were they were. Human beings were we're in the, in the middle, middle of what? Mud, ignorance, killing, oppressing. That was the, that was the way. 
No rules, no respect, no nothing. Nothing. Anything is open. Any rule can be violated. If you are sleeping in peace in your bed, a tribe has invaded your tribe, you have become a slave in the, the next day. That was the case. You, your wife, your kids have become slaves the next day. She, got, she, she went to another person in front of your eye. You are one of the guys, one of the, one of the, the, the real value people in your tribe. For no reason, and, and just a next door tribe has invaded your tribe. God, your wife has been taken to another man in front of your eyes. You have been taken to be sold the next day in the market an auction, a back, two, three, four. And before yesterday, you might have been the, the, the leader of this tribe. No rules, no nothing. Your kids in front of your eyes have been taken to a different land to be sold in a different market. And they are lost forever. We discussed last week about Zaid, Zaid ibn Haritha. Zaid has been taken out of his father for Haritha was the, the leader, and he was not there. Just in the middle of the night, another tribe has invaded his tribe. They have taken his wife and his son, and they are gone. Gone. And that's what Omar is saying. Kunna adillah. What is the meaning of Wallahi al-Azim, Wallahi al-Azim, Wallahi al-Azim. Some of those rules cannot be violated in the worlds of animals. Because Allah has set them, set them up in a way that some rules are being applied and implemented and it will never be violated. How the ant can violate the rules of an elephant? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You, are, you live in the sea, you live in the sea. I live on land, I live in land. That is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set it up. We cannot accept it. But human being can can violate when deen is not there, when there is no iman, when there is no fear, because of the two tendencies that we have, if there is no guideline, there is no guide tour, there is no references, anything can be violated. The woman used to sleep with 10 men in the same night, in front of everyone, in front of everyone. And if she, has, if she will be pregnant, she will choose who among is the ten to claim the son to. That was the case. You don't know who's, you don't know who's your real father. That is the reason the tribes that used to be sure of their tree of, of nasab, of fame and relationship, of back descent. They used to be very well known and reputable because nothing has been corrupted in the middle. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear on the behalf of Al-Walid ibn al-Mughir, the father of Khalid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who can know even that other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the whole story? When he kept making fun of Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam, he given hard time to the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed in the Quran you are the son of other three. <laughs> and when Muhammad alayhi salatu has, has started to inform the, the people of Mecca about Allah's revelation, that's a part of the Quran, you cannot change it. Ya ayyuhal muddathir, qum fa'anzir wa rabbaka fa'kabbir, till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa noon wal qalam wa ma yasturun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjected in Walid ibn al-Mughira, you are making fun of my prophet, you are giving my prophet hard time, see what's gonna happen. And he said, he told them, Allah revealed to me that in Walid ibn al-Mughira, Walid used to be like one of the top two, top three in the whole tribe. He's the son of the ten, ten elder kids, including one of them is Khalid. Khalid that was just the young amongst them. Khalid ibn al-Walid amongst the ten kids of an kana dha malin wa bani, malin wa bani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, I gave you the money and you were the one who used to just like walking in the, 
in the middle of the tribe, in the middle of Mecca, and no one can even speak to you because you have the, the dignity because of your kids. Let me tell you something, Al Walid. You are the son of Adam too. The same day, everyone has heard that no one can confirm, no one can deny. But Muhammad is saying that. Al Walid himself, because he knows that Muhammad is truthful.